preservation of and increased access to the 92nd Street Y Humanities Audio Archives is generously funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities. It's like when you walk in some territory and you by chance just step into something that somebody didn't. You just happen to choose the right, pro uh, the right um, uh, problem. Now, uh, recent developments in the theories of creativity, for example, by uh, uh, Michael Howard, uh, Howard Gardner from the Harvard University. He wants to redo all our notions of creativity, not to look at the single genius, but to see how creativity, some interactional model between a genius and its surroundings. He suggested, for example, that we should not take the analytical ability, the mathematical aptitude, as a sign of, of a real genius, because there are many different intelligences. There are musical intelligence. There are uh, there are there is special intelligence. There, there is an intelligence of human relations. The fact that Einstein is a symbol of genius is also a revelation of this attitude of ours that the mathematical intelligence is the superior kind of intelligence. But I don't think that anybody really came with the explanation of the mystery of the genius. Yes. Uh, I would like to respond to your remark. Thank you very much. There is a question, and this is a controversial question, how uh, far the Einstein ability or inability for languages affected his scientific theorizing. There is no question that some kind of visual imagery was very important to, for Einstein's scientific work. And for example, Einstein was notorious for thought experiments. He would get in, into the heart of the matter by certain thought experience. For example, in the age of 16, of the age of 16, he already had some idea about the principle of relativity by imagining himself traveling with the speed of light and imagining what kind of absurd situation this would be and which would mean that the speed of light must be constant for all observers because then if we would travel with the speed of light, it would be an awkward, a very strange phenomena. On the other hand, I think one should be aware from drawing some uh, far-fetched conclusion from this, not all our children who start to talk late become Einsteins. So definitely some kind of capacity of visualizing certain kind of thing that cannot be put directly into words is probably some re prerequisite for certain ki kind of thinking that Einstein did. But what exactly is the connection? I think it, we are still very much in the dark about it. Yes? Would you, could you tell me exactly, would you like me to talk about the way that uh, the common man affected or, or uh, the more about writers, poets? Uh, uh. It seems to me that as far as the man on the street is, there is uh, this new 
uh, age wave that people talk a lot about quantum and don't understand much about this. I was a witness to a certain kind of uh, uh, group for new consciousness when the lady explained to an interested uh, young man what, what is this fusion of Eastern and Western wisdom is, and she told him, we have to realize that we are both waves and particles. So I don't believe that this is very, very meaningful. Uh, on the other hand, there is this, uh, uh, the ideas of relativity and of uncertainty and determinism are very different ideas, because the ideas of uh, Relativity, as I mentioned in my, in my talk, there are ideas of relativity. Despite the fact that certain notions were realized to be relative, like space and time, the main idea of relativity is the idea of absolute. Uh, the, a lot of relativistic ideas were spread into other fields, like linguistic or anthropology, for example, that all cultures are equal, that we don't have the superior Western point of view to judge and to overlook what's going on in another culture, that all, actually all frameworks or culture are, have, have uh, their own integrity and they are, they are all relatively uh, valid in their own framework. On the other hand, uh, the idea of um, complementarity, which I mentioned about Born, exactly is the incarnation of this relativistic approach, because Bohr uh, say that we really have to realize that different viewpoints apply in different situations, and he tried to extend this idea of, co of complementarity into wider frameworks. For example, he tried to apply it to psychology or bi biology, for example, and this idea of complementarity of Bohr it was very appealing and almost healing spiritually and intellectually for all the physicists who surrounded Bohr. For example, Bohr gave an uh, example of complementarity between love and justice. When we love somebody, we cannot see him in the light of justice. Whether this is true or not, it's another story. But also this metaphor of complementarity provided a very powerful metaphor to organize our human experience, which does not fit into some narrow bounds of deterministic physics. And the same is true about uncertainty, which kind of captured something which we knew all along that things are not predictable. And in the early 20s, when the idea, in the uh, 20s when the idea appeared, it was very fast picked up by genes and by other people who tried to see, tried to connect the uncertainty, the lack of determinism with the freedom of, of the will. There was an unending possibilities to connect all these ideas with culture. Einstein did not regard this as something intellectually honest, intellectually, intellectually valuable. He had this strong divide between science and life. Bohr, for example, uh, thought otherwise. He craved to extend science to life, to merge life into science, and to see how science can be part of our spiritual search of our spiritual self-identity when science and life are built on the same general principles. Yes? What is the highest uh, educational degree that uh, Einstein earned? Einstein uh, uh, did his, uh, submitted his thesis after he was once rejected, and it, he, he had the equivalent of our PhD after he submitted his thesis, which was on the way on Brownian motions, which demonstrated the reality of atoms. Any other questions? Yes, please. Yes, yes, indeed. That's that's exactly the the form a basis for 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 the black hole th uh, for a black hole theory. They were directly connected these notions for the late with the later developments. That's one of the instances that the basis that Einstein provided were uh, incorporated into so many uh, future developments in physics. Yes. Yes. The, uh, that's exactly, Einstein used the concept of God as 
same methodological maxims when he, for example, encountered some two different possibilities of building a theory, he would say, if I would be God, let's see what I would do. So he was, his God, as I mentioned, was not a personal God. He, he, he was a God how to build this world. And does not, God does not play dice is exactly the expression of Einstein disbelief in statistical theories. I mean, playing dice is a, ch a game of chance, and uh, Einstein did not believe that physics can be built on the, uh, the fundamental physics should be built on the notion of chance. As a temporary tool, as a temporary device, it's great, it can mm, give n uh, nice predictions, but as a ultimate fundamental theory, this is not good enough. There is another famous expression of Einstein. He, maybe you heard also this one, uh, God, God is subtle, but not malicious. That's another of his famous expression. And here he meant that the laws exact should be simple and reasonable. For example, when there, there was this failure of 19th century physics to uh, ex to explain the failure to detect the motion of Earth through so-called ether, and there were many numerous hypotheses which were desi designed to save the notion of the ether. And Einstein said that these are too awkward. God cannot work this way. He is subtle, but not malicious. He wouldn't, he wouldn't build up something that awkward, that complicated. Yes? Mm hmm yes, yes, yes. Because one of the questions that I'm working with has to do with language. I was almost sure that you were going to say it. Have you read uh, Benjamin Moore? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, this idea that language is how we are shaped, what we feel, and, and the quote, which I think comes from Moore, is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, have you been about that? Um, I don't, as far as I know, I would like to tell to, to the audience who Winteler was. Einstein uh, left, uh, Einstein's parents moved, who were, uh, Einstein's father had an electrotechnical business which failed many times. Einstein suffered from this very, very many times. And finally, the uh, family, his mother, father, and sister moved to, to Milan, and Einstein was left in Munich. He detested the German schools, and he left Munich and came to, um, to Milan to live with his, with his parents, and tried to enter the Zurich Polytechnic, the ETH, uh, without finishing his school, and he failed. So then Aunt, uh, Einstein was sent to the very progressive school in uh, Swiss to uh, to our uh, Canton Schule in Swiss, which had very progressive teachers, very unlike German teachers, who were researchers in their fields and who were of very liberal views. And this was one of the best experience that Einstein had. And his Winteler, as this lady mentioned, was, was uh, Einstein's teacher there, and he was a very distinguished linguist, and he, uh, f uh, he published very interesting researches on the use of language. I'm not familiar and I'm not aware that uh, it had any direct influence of Einstein, but this liberal atmosphere was definitely very crucial in Einstein's ability to regain himself after the failure to enter, enter ETH and to again develop very positive attitude to learning and to start his scientific career. Yes. Max Talmy was the poor Polish student who was uh, di who dined in Einstein's house when Einstein was about 12 years old and on Max Talmy it was a custom for better to do Jewish families to invite poor students for a meal 
once a week. And Max Talmy is the student who introduced Einstein into very many important things. And uh, one of the things that Max Talmy introduced, uh, uh, introduced Einstein to was to Kant's reading and to, very, and to other liberal ideas of his times. It was Max Talmy, I think, who offered to Einstein to read Aaron Bernstein's books, who were these popular books which were which had a very big influence on Einstein, we presuppose, not because he studied there the final scientific wisdom, but maybe because Einstein had this panoramic view of what physics was when he came to more technical, specialized learning in the Zurich Polytechnic, maybe he was able to make some connections because he already had some wide background and he, he had some inspiration about what science have, has to look like. Anybody else would like to ask a question? Yes, that's the last question. Yes. I think this would be too much for this audience, but if you like, we can talk about this otherwise. Uh, after the, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more information on the 92nd Street Y New York and all of our programs, please visit us at 92ny.org.